And that's now that's everything. Okay. Got nothing else. Nothing in the tank. Waiting for the uh, race cars to finish driving by my house. Mm. I've been pr- I've been pretty good down here, so. Yeah. Did I mention that we turned the air on? It's gotten that hot up I, these ways. I believe you did when we recorded one of the, uh, I think, Piramani shows, like for the Patreon. That because because and then the next day it was supposed to be like ninety and ninety one consecutively. Right. So. so the weekend here in the Northeast was hot. Mm-hmm. Um. And then, like, it's been back down to the 70s the last several days, but I'm not reopening up all the windows and I'm not returning off the air. It just is what it is. Returning off the air means turning off the air, right? Uh, Sure. Okay. (laughs) It's a little confusing. Yeah, it's just the way I talk, you know? No, I got you. Look, when you're talking to the king of communication, I always get my point across clearly and concisely. It's tough sometimes, you know? Right. We did open up the pool though this weekend, Ooh, and uh, we I did get to hop in, uh, if only to vacuum the pool. Ooh, see, because uh, you have to walk around and vacuum it inside. Yeah. Okay, because like the pool we had, we had an above ground years and years ago, which my uncle has, uh, it still has in his yard. I think we talked about this. Like it was a big one that you wa- you could do it by walking around the edge of the the pool. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But I feel like if you walked around the edge of your pool, it would collapse. Um, no, it just I think I didn't feel because uh, my wife said she did it last time without going in. Because, uh, again, it's even though it's 90 plus degrees out, if that water is not 87 degrees, she ain't getting in. Right, right. Um, And she claims that she vacuumed it last time without getting in. But like the hose like attachment thing kept falling off. Right. Mm hmm. So I'm like, I don't know how she was able to do this, but I ain't going to argue with her. She claims she did it, you know? So, um, the, so the thing I was most worried about opening up the pool was that we were going to open it up and it was just going to be a swamp. It was just going to be like dark green and it was going to be filthy. Right. It was going to be viscous. Yes. So while it was a little filthy, it was mostly just some of the dirt that we didn't get out last time, but the water was like super clear when we took it out. Right. Right. We took the when we took the cover out, and then Friday, um, while you know my wife was in between bringing my kid home from work, she had mentioned like, well, maybe we'll start getting some of the shit ready to go Friday night since I had work at Super Secret Science job on Saturday morning. Ooh. Uh, but like we had all those crazy rainstorms on a Friday, and the one thing that I was the most worried about was because we had the filter in the shed in the backyard and like it's you know it only had to be carried like 20 feet from where the shed was to where like the hookup was Mm -hmm. but this thing was it's essentially like uh how it's like the size of a keg maybe right but it weighs like 150 pounds Mm -hmm. so it's a little unwieldy and like there's no way i would have been able to like pick it up and carry it so we had like a little hand cart dolly to move it with but because the ground was so soft it like sunk in right but that went much easier than i thought it would we opened up the pool the next morning before i started work and like i said the water wasn't like green it was actually super clear so we just filled it up the kid went in for a little while on saturday and then he left to go to a different pool party on saturday (laughs) right and then uh, Sunday morning, I got in, and I'm like, mm, a, little, a little slippery at the bottom here. Let me let me give it the what for um, with the vacuum, and that took a while. That was nice, relaxing, whatever, going around and getting the edges and everything else like that. Mm-hmm. But then, like, you know, kid, kid was in. He had two friends over. They were all in it till about 4 o'clock, but then it's been, like, shitty weather lately, so nobody's been in it since. Right. Or, I, I have no idea when it's going to get nice again, but at least the pool is open, so when it does get nice, it's, you know, it's there. I don't know what you're talking about, shitty weather. T- today was Todd's perfect weather day, Joe. Oh, well, listen, this is perfect weather for me. 
mm-hmm. but it's not perfect swimming weather, I guess would be the best way to say it. I right? could still swim in this, but uh, 66, overcast, looks like it's going to rain, but it doesn't. No uh-huh. sun burning my delicate alabaster skin. I love it. <laughs> so. No, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm all for like 66 to 70 with a slight breeze all the time. Oh, yeah, 66 is the... Is the yes, that's perfect for me. Breeze, nice yeah. cool breeze, no humidity, uh-huh. and, and I'm good to go. I could yeah. live in that. I could live in that temperature range for the rest of my life. Grass grows slowly, and snow don't fall. That's like right. The, so. And because we've been doing shit on the weekends, I've been taking to mowing the lawn in the middle of the week, which is just like really fucking up my schedule. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing, 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 be, nothing beats working, then going out and mowing the lawn, then eating dinner, and then doing a podcast. Kind of wipes you out a bit. <laughs> well, you're gonna get that podcast energy up. You know, now uh-huh. I'm here. But uh, see, that's one of the things I don't have to worry about no more. I found my guy. So right, you mentioned that. Yep, he came today or yesterday. He was supposed to do it Friday, but we ended up having rain Friday in the afternoon because. Uh, the guy who does mine, um, I went to high school with him and there's a bar two blocks up the road from my house and that's where he drinks at the end of the day. So my property is the last one on the list for the day. <laughs> so, and then he'll go down there. The only thing that I don't like about him is he does a great job. Uh, <clears throat> he came the other day and I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want, when you come, I, the Cinnabon's like half a block from my house call me and I will come pay you. I will come pay you for Mayan, the one property that we have and my father's. Cause he does my father's before he comes over. That way he doesn't have to see my father and me at the, you know, like try to get to things. And I was like, just do, just let me know and I'll get you. And you know, now, now he didn't call me and I didn't see him cutting the grass while I was in the office. So um, I'm, I have the money in an envelope, but I'm one behind and I don't want to like, I, I don't, I don't like, when I have a bill and I can pay it, I want it gone. So I don't want to have to be keeping track and then keeping track of what my father owes me too. I just, I'm like, let's do this. Let's get it done and paid. That's the only problem I have, but I don't have to do grass. So I'm very, very happy. Yeah, I, I get you. And uh, I don't know. I think, you know, the, with the pool taking up a bunch of real estate, it ain't so, so bad to do the uh, lawn these days, you know? Just just blacktop the backyard, Joe. You know, I joked for years, um, said that I wanted to get a AstroTurf in the front of the backyard. Right. We said we said that on the show. Somebody even, like, uh, wrote in about how we could do it. It's okay, but go ahead. But that seems like one big, large upfront cost that I will never get to see, like, the full extent of that, like, 30 years from now, where mm-hmm. it's it's paid for itself, you know? Right. Uh, well, it really won't pay for itself. It'll just be what you saved on gas and lawnmowers. That's pretty much it. Well, these days with gas. Oh, my God. Well, goodness. I filled up the truck today, Joe. It was on E. Take a guess. <sighs> Your truck? You don't do premium, do you? You're not. No, fancy. I do ghetto gas. <laughs> uh, I'll say 175. No, no, my, uh, you know what? Uh, it was only uh, I want to say 96 dollars. Oh, that's nothing. Well, my truck is it, for a big truck, a V8. I think it only has a 15. I don't hold like 15 to 17 gallon tank. So it's not like huge, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the old joke that I always do when anybody asks me how like how's your truck on gas town? I go, Oh, it loves it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I said, eight cylinders will gobble that shit up. With my baby car that I have, um, mm-hmm. I think I could probably fill it up from E these days. Right. For like if I was to do my Gazintas like 40 bucks. Right, and then all that travel to work that you that you burn right, gas right. on. Because the other day, um, I ran over, and it was like at a quarter of a tank, mm-hmm. and uh, I think I put like twenty six in, and that filled it. So, like I said, I'm just doing my gazintas, you know. Right. 
it's like it can be you anyway. Um, I don't know. I, I don't want to be that again. We're already the 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 podcast that talks about uh, the weather, grass, the lawn, food. Right. Well, we're gonna get to food. Oh. So, um, did you know Arby's sells burgers now? No, I did not. I thought maybe this was gonna be that that roadside barbecue shit that you talk about sometimes. But no, I did not know Arby's does burgers now. No, I so I get my roadside barbecue, and I missed uh, the meatloaf, which is the best that they do. Right, uh, all and, ends. Give me all ends. Yeah, it was a couple weeks ago, and I missed it. I think it was like I don't know what the hell was going on, but anyway, uh, I saw people talking about it online because I'm in like a weird uh, vein of fast food Twitter, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not completely in it, but I, when I saw people tweeting about Arby's selling burgers, I'm like, oh, it's maybe like a test market thing. Remember, like, test markets used to be a thing? Right, like, oh, like, 12 McDonald's had McPizza to try yeah. it out. Yeah. But uh, this past Tuesday, I guess, or or no, this past Monday, was like the nationwide rollout of the mm-hmm. Arby's Wagyu beef burger, Right. Right. And even just the picture of it looked a little too busy for me. <laughs> right. And I didn't want to roll those dice. Um, but I was shocked to see that our the, the Arby's by me had it, you know? I don't know about the one in Scranton. I'll have yeah. to look. And getting a burger from Arby's, though, doesn't feel right, you know? Right. And then you go up and you order it through a robot, Joe? Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Well, I get a robot. You know, we're not getting those anytime <laughs> soon. I, 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 was, I was seeing, too... I just my I saw online as we were doing like uh, talking about food, um, a burger cheese injector. It was like a big syringe. Okay. <laughs> and I want like you could put the bur- like when the burger's done, you have like the cheese goop, and you just shoot it right into the burger. So it's like a jelly donut. Yeah. And I and I think I'm like. I want to get one of these, and it's like Joe's worst nightmare. Like, every burger he bites into now, he has to worry about whether or not I've injected cheese in it. Because you won't know if it's just on the top, you know? I'll say this. There was a while ago. I don't know if they still sell them there. This was many, many moons ago. Uh, Wegmans would sell, like, pre-done up, like, burger patties, you know? With the bacon and cheese mixed right in. Yeah, and they were really good. Oh, see? It, oh, I was looking at the, my giant market has those and I get them. I love them on the, on the, I, I haven't talked about it in a while on the Foreman grill. Yeah. So good. But uh, I was like, I wonder if I got these, if he'd even know, like he'd eat it yep. and he'd be like, Oh, I took the lid off. There's no, there's no, there's no square cheese on top. So I'm okay. <laughs> and then, it, it's, it's a, it's a hint of just enough cheese. And I put a barbecue sauce on there. So it all blends in. I forget right. what the hell I had the other day. And it was like uh, something that was somebody something leftover sandwich or some shit. Right. And it had cheese on it. And I'm like, I don't like food going to waste. And I tried it. And I'm just like, no, it's too much cheese. Unfortunately, this is going to have to go to waste. My God. Yeah. Listen. Well, so this so this is the other thing. With it opening up by my house and just talking about it, right? It's not open yet, even though, like, I see people going through the drive-thru. Uh, you can't order from their app or the website, <laughs> which is the preferred way to make orders. Right, right. Fast places uh, is a Taco Bell, right? Right. Now, my son has the same delicate sensibilities when it comes to me regarding <sighs> spicy things. Right. Me too. So I'll, I'm, I'm on your boat with that. But go ahead. Okay. And we had talked it up and he's like, we're going to get Taco Bell for dinner uh, today. And I go, no, you're going to get Taco Bell for dinner. I'm not. I'm not brave enough. You know, I had a Choco Taco once there 20 years ago and I'm done. <laughs> wow. Uh, so he got something and he liked it. But, you know, obviously there's a difference between like, the tacos and the gorditas and the chalupas and all the other things, right? You mm-hmm. know? And I think what a lot of people, you know, get is the tacos, which is, you know, a flimsy shell or maybe a Dorito shell. Soft taco all the way, man. But okay, ahead. well, so this is, um, you can get, there's something that you could get 
and I forget what it was because he and I were looking at the menu where it's like a regular hard shell taco mm-hmm. with a soft shell taco around it and a layer right. of cheese that like combines the two together. Sounds delicious. Okay. Uh, so I was looking and you can pay like a little extra to get like steak or chicken as opposed to the normal taco bell meat right um but then i and like i'm like okay i could do that and like i could say no sour cream and i could pay the little bit extra to get guacamole because i love or not guacamole um avocado maybe i love avocado avocado is real good and i'm thinking to myself then like so I could get something from there, but then does that defeat the purpose of eating at Taco Bell if I'm making all of these weird substitutions to have it not be your standard, like, nickel Taco Bell sandwich or whatever, you know? Right. Well, first of all, I, I think you're actually worse than the cheese thing with no sour cream. You're nuts. Um, yeah, I don't know. Second of all... Um, if you're changing meats, that's fine because when you go to a straight up Mexican restaurant, they're yeah. like, do you want taco with pork, beef, or chicken? Like those are your three choices. So you're, if you're swapping a meat, then it really doesn't matter right. because, and they'll do steak or whatever instead of the ground taco meat. So I have gotten like, you know, in the, uh, at the local, uh, Mexican restaurant, like, uh, ch- chicken tacos and they're, they're amazing. So that's not. Uh, you know, you're fine. You could try, you could substitute whatever and it's still Taco Bell. Still that high quality that Taco Bell is known for. Mm-hmm. Not a sponsor. No. Uh, but like I said, my kid got two of them. Right. Um, like the, the chalupas or whatever it was. And he went no sour cream, no tomatoes, but like everything else. I'm a no and tomato he, guy myself, but go ahead. And he ate it and he ate the one. He's like, oh, the one is a little too much for me. I'm like, oh, I'll just throw in the fridge, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I will say this. So the day is coming here soon where I'm going to go and eat Taco Bell for the first time in my life. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say this, and I think this might be a participating thing because I see people talking online saying they don't have it or they do or whatever. Um, if your McDonald's has bagels back in stock right a bagel sandwich now i'm gonna say this i understand it's not the fancy bagel from todd's bagel shop okay Mm -hmm. and i understand that it's mcdonald's however with the bagels being back in stock for the breakfast meats uh mcdonald's now has the steak as an option right right and you get like a it's a it's a it's a steak and egg bagel, of course, no cheese. Of course. And I didn't know. Now, first of all, they did not give me this as an option. Okay. Mm-hmm. But when I got it and it was on there, it was like the greatest treat of all. Uh, grilled onions. I love grilled onions on almost anything. Oh. So. so Todd, it was a steak and egg grilled onions bagel from mcdonald's and then i was looking at the app and the the online thing and you could get it on the biscuit as well nah get the bagel See, I'm gonna, okay I, obviously i'm getting the bagel but if the bagel runs out because the bagel could be a limited time only thing hopefully they keep the steak and i get a steak and onion biscuit mm-hmm. oh. See, oh, just, I, can, I can feel my arteries clogging I'll say this really quick on bagels. A bad bagel, bagels are like pizza. Even like your run of the mill store bought, like bagged bagels from like lenders or whatever are still pretty damn good. So I'm yeah. okay. I'm still okay with that. I got no problem. But like I said, when I would go to New York and I'd be in the hotel and they would have store bought bagels like as your breakfast, I'm like, what we're in New York. What what do you that's when I have my problem. So I got no, I got nothing there. Um and I'm I'm not a steak guy on breakfast sandwiches. I was always bacon, bacon, bacon. And in the last like six weeks, I've come around on ham on my breakfast sandwiches and with my breakfast. Uh the guy who uh rents the building behind the Cinnabon, he every Saturday he'll show up 
and he'll bring breakfast sandwiches and he'll bring a, a selection of them. Like here's wh- whatever, if it's the croissant, the croissant from Burger King or the McDonald's ones or whatever, but it's like whatever he gets, whether it's biscuit, croissant, bagel, he gets them all the same, but then gets a selection of meat. So when they come in, it's like, you want sausage, you want ham, you want bacon. And he knows I always like the bacon. Well, one day the, somebody else took the bacon one. He's like, all I got left is ham. And I'm like, I'll do it up. And I, I'm like, I am now, I'm, I'm a changed man. I'm a ham guy. And then I went to the glider diner one day. And I was, I think I was telling you this. I went, the day I went for my French toast that I really wanted after I didn't get it the night of the, uh, the, the bash at the brewery. And I was like, okay, let me get ham there. And I thought it was going to be like a little piece of like sliced ham from the deli. And it was a ham steak. It was like half an inch thick and like, you know, really long. And I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And now I'm full on breakfast ham, man. Like that's the way to go. Uh, I got no problem with any and all of the breakfast meats. I'm anti sausage. See, I'm okay. I like, a, I like sausage. I don't like a hot sausage, but uh, any other, so- like a breakfast sausage is top notch. See, I don't like any sausage at all, even if it's not spicy, because it's, you know what, sausage is the garbage topping or meat. Okay. Um, It's not, it's not like A1 top of the heap, like pepperoni, Um, eh. but uh, sausage, but sausage will, I don't know if it's because I'm thinking about it now, I'm getting choked up. Um, I don't know if it's because <laughs> sausage will give me really bad heartburn. Like when I get uh, like. Uh, strombolis or whatever I'm always like Give me ham pepperoni and salami And I'm a, I'm good to go I'll always be like please take the sausage Out if you give me a stromboli with sausage I'll cry Yeah cause I'll get um Like we have a place and it's like a local Chain place off the square down Here where they do um Strombolis Not strombolis what the hell are they Calzones Calzones there you go Calzones have regatta cheese Right. Where I think a stromboli has mozzarella. Okay. That's the spoken like a Spoken like a true uh, Italian. Yep, yep, yep. You, Tommy Rich, Tracy Smothers. <laughs> right. Real full-blooded Italians. Tony Soprano, right, uh-huh. gotcha. Uh, but they have like a meat one, and I always put the thing through that says no pepperoni, and if I get pepperoni, I'm fucking pissed you, off. It, if you know if that's right you get to eat pepperoni you don't have to eat pepperoni you get to eat pepperoni no. so Love did you i i know uh i was not the only one who tweeted this at you that domino's has the pepsi cola infused uh pepperoni pizza have you I, tried this yet no but i gotta look i'm it was one of those things that came into my purview as you tweeted at me and i was like i wasn't sure if this was a joke or not and i and i didn't really look into it i have to look into seeing trying it because i will i will try it you are taking two of the greatest things man and god have ever created pepperoni and pepsi oh that's good stuff but you haven't tried it yet no i don't know if ours has it i'll have to look up tomorrow night as we record this uh wednesday was used to be my pizza night kind of a deal um so i'll see if they have it if they do i'll definitely give it a try who now knows? this is the last this is the last uh, food mashup, and I think we have too much food that people are mashing up foods that shouldn't be mashed up. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, Pepsi and pepperoni is the bottom of the barrel. That's just garbage. I mean, the top of the heap right no. there is what it is. Personally, like when you say we have too much food because we're mashing it up, I agree. But I totally, I've always said this that we truly live in a golden age of pizza crusts. Okay. Like, all the like you can get garlic infused pizza crust you can get s- stuffed crust with cheese you can get like sesame crust you can get all this like all these different crusts thin thick whatever like i could like you know go to some restaurants and you have like 10 different crust choice we it's not the golden age of some stupid batman characters the golden age of pizza crusts joe oh i was i was attempting to help uh with that person <laughs> Not get a regards, lunchbox in, in regards to his uh, golden age of name, who shall not be mentioned. Right, the, the, the Voldemort of Batman. The Voldemort of Batman. Yes, <laughs> right. uh, uh, I thought it was maybe uh, a uh, Kevin Nash lunchbox with the uh, HH no. on it. 
Oh, so we'll have to. I'll I I I'll have to ask you something off air in regards to uh, Batman Voldemort. Okay. Um, but the last thing I was going to mention, I thought it was fake at first, but then I saw it making the rounds. And then, like, actual legitimate news articles about it. And we'll close with this. Right. Uh, where it's a mashup of an Oreo and a Ritz cracker. Nope. Where it's, like, one part of the Oreo cookie, the cream filling, and a Ritz cracker. So you have, like, the chocolate part of an Oreo. Yes. Then you have stuffing, whatever, like, how whether it's double, regular, whatever. And then a Ritz cracker. Yes. That's disgusting. Uh yeah, I don't like that. I don't I it didn't look right. Like just looking at it, yeah. And I like all those things, but I don't need some things together, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So I this... like my rich rich crackers are the Lamborghini of crackers, as far as I'm concerned. But I don't want them with chocolate and cr- like uh, what was like that? The, whatever the pure fat is that's in the middle of, a, of an Oreo. Right. Depending on what you're eating, I could go. Uh, I can make an argument that a club cracker might be better than a Ritz cracker. Mm, yeah, it's up there. Um, I'm not even gonna get into oyster crackers, but that's a whole. Yeah, well, thing. oyster crackers, its own, th- it's its own thing, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, this is like uh, Dave Attell has a bit in his routine that I'll butcher. Uh, that two of his favorite tastes are scotch whiskey and cotton candy, but together, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> right. And then he talks about how it reminds him of a time at the circus, that something else <laughs> happened at the circus. Right. That's we'll it. let it go with that. Right. All right. Uh, that's a perfect place to end this episode. Another heavy food episode. Uh, this was uh, 393 of Longbox Heroes After Dark, I guess, right? I'll take your word for it. All right. Uh, Patreon.com slash Longbox Heroes. Uh, the Amazon affiliate link that's in the show notes to all of these episodes. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. See you next week. You're listening to the soon-to-be-named soon network, to be. the Lamborghini <laughs> of Podcast Networks.